Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock, with another wonderful selection of pieces from Bricklink.com. Alright, and today I'm accompanied by the first day from my city advent calendar, which seems to be a very mini ocean explorer ship, which is very nice. I say uh, today because I'm filming this the day before release. Today is Tuesday and this is released on Wednesday. Let me open this box with my knife. Let's see what we've got. It should be quite an interesting order, this. Just tip it all out. There doesn't seem to be any paperwork there. There we go. Uh, so I'll put that to one side. Right, lots of lovely bits in here. All looks very nicely wrapped. So uh, I'll start with this bag because it looks like it's got loads of good pieces in. And I'm going to push all of these to one side because I'm going to focus on these pieces, which are actually quarter uh, cylinder pieces. They're really sort of inverted slopes, but you see I can have four of those together to make uh, kind of a circle. And they make up the bottom of a tank. And then hopefully somewhere else, there are eight tops as well. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and they make the top of a tank. And both these pieces are very old and quite rare. Uh, so there's the top of a tank look, Whoop, like that. And they were part of set 4537, Twin Tank Transport, which was a really interesting uh, rail carriage. I think you'll agree. Uh, and I really wanted to get one of those just to augment my passenger train, uh, passenger train, cargo train, of course. Um, and they're very, very expensive because they're very rare. And these pieces are probably the hardest part to find in that set. So I thought if I just uh, went to Bricklink and found a store that had these parts to make up the tanks like that, they were going to have some of these uh, wedge plates as well to give them a bit of a stripe in the octane colours, um, then it would save me a lot of money because that set complete on eBay just starts at £40 and basically that might include very stained old pieces um, and the price could just go right up from there, you know, a lot more. Uh, so just buying these pieces from a vendor, which is why I picked this particular uh, Bricklink vendor, cost me in total about £11. Uh, and given that the rest of the pieces are relatively common and normal, uh, I can get those for next to nothing. Uh, and I can also kind of bring that set up to date because it's a little bit old and it, it doesn't benefit from all the more modern pieces we've got nowadays so I think I can even do a slightly better job so that is a task for another day uh, and as I say I've got all these wedge plates in white uh, and red and also in green which will be another bag that I can get started uh, there we go there's some green ones to give it kind of the octan stripe which is kind of obligatory really in lego terms i think so i'll put those bags to one side right what have i missed uh, i've missed a few of these round bricks that i use for big trees i think i've probably got enough of those for uh, another big tree now so i might stop buying those here's a black panel with an interesting uh, sticker on the inside now that's from the set 6398 Central Precinct HQ. Uh, but really, I bought this for the part itself, which is this black panel uh, without the side supports. So top tip for Bricklink buying, if there's a part that you need that isn't available, check out the stickered ones, and maybe you can find one with a sticker that you don't want uh, that you can just use the piece underneath. So I'll probably carefully peel this off using my patented hot tea technique. <laughs> and then I can keep it for future use, should I wish. It's kind of got somebody in prison, uh, that's sort of a policeman, but he's not really in police uniform, is he? Uh, a helicopter and the precinct HQ itself. So that's good. Uh, then I've got this, and I was very happy to get this. So I've been looking out for one of these for a while. It's a great big skateboard, uh, and you can see it's got these very different white wheels on the bottom. They're a bit grubby, but hopefully they'll clean up. Uh, and they're a bit sort of bendy actually they feel a bit almost rubberized sort of hard rubber but nonetheless rubbery you can kind of see it bending I won't bend it too much in case I break it but um so it's got white wheels it's this very sort of wide board itself that's blue that's very grubby uh, and this is essentially a Fabuland skateboard 
Uh, except this wasn't from a Fabulan set. There's a red one, which I think has yellow wheels, and that's from a Fabulan set. Uh, but this one's actually from a disgusting-looking Belleville set, 5870, Pretty Playland, which is fairly hard to say. Um, and Pretty Playland, uh, well, it looks horrible, but it does have this wonderful blue skateboard in it. So I thought I'd have that. Uh, and I think I've let it slip before that I'm planning a skateboard shop. And I thought that this probably wouldn't be for sale as a skateboard, but might be the basis of a 3D sign. Eh? So if that was sort of above the door of the skate shop uh, and it had a sign on these studs with the name of the shop on, then um, I think that'd be a really good sign. And it hasn't got studs on the bottom, so I probably need to use clips to hold onto these axles. Uh, but that's why you need a piece like this before you start designing, because otherwise you can't uh, incorporate it very well because it's going to be on none of the uh, digital design software platforms. So anyway, that's really good to have. Very happy with that. Might even stick somebody on it in the short term. <laughs> OK, then we've got some flame pieces, which I've never seen before. Um, so I thought I'd get them. There were four of them. So I thought they looked really quite realistic as flames. Now... Periodically, I get a suggestion to have a building that's on fire so the fire brigade can be attending. And I thought these could be really good in the backdrop amongst all of the more colourful flame pieces you can get uh, to really add some uh, height to the flames in that sort of situation. So I could use them for that. I could also use them under the sea, of course, in one of my uh, under the sea scenes. And I think that this bright red could look like coral and seaweed and all the rest of it sort of waving around so I really could use it as that so uh, these pieces were found in lots of sets but mostly power racers ones including 8646 speed slammer bike and that was a set from 2005 yeah so I'm really happy with those I think they look really good and they kind of see through a bit obviously because they've got gaps in them so uh, they wouldn't really block our line of sight under the sea so yeah really good glad to have those there's a plate for my uh, fairground base. Uh, right, what have I got here? Oh yes, oh yes. Now I've never had one of these before. These are from all the Atlantis sets, largely. Uh, and they are called key holders. And they're kind of bits of rock. And they've got kind of the same base as one of these, I think. Yep. Uh, and they've got this attachment on the top in order to take one of the Atlantis keys. So... These were in all sorts of Atlantis sets, including 8078, Portal of Atlantis. Uh, and I think I'm going to be using them in exactly the same way, basically to support these wonderful key pieces, of which this one is clearly brand new, because I think it's in its original packaging. So it would have come straight out of the set. So let's uh, get in that. Hopefully <laughs> not damage anything along the way. So that's that. And that would fit in to here like... There we go, like that. And there's several different ones of these. I've already got the blue squid one. And obviously this is the green big manta ray one. Very nice as well. And I thought that in my under the sea scene, my uh, lobster king could be summoning the giant creatures of the, day, uh, of the deep uh, and um, beckoning them to attack the uh, invading minifigures from the surface. Uh, so I don't think I'll have a giant ray in my scene, but I definitely will have a giant squid and so on. So uh, they were quite cheap. So I got six because there are actually six different keys. So if I did want to do a big display like around that uh, portal of Atlantis, then I can now. So they're quite good. They look very interesting. I wonder if they can be used with a Technic axle in a different way. I'll have to experiment with those because that looks like a Technic axle hole. Um, yeah, I'll we'll have to see what we can do with those. That looks really good fun. Uh, right, here's a big bag of big stuff. So let's go in here. Oh, we have got a windscreen piece with a great big Doctor Inferno sticker on the front. Now that's on a very skew whiff, so I'm hoping again I can move that using my patented hot tea technique. Uh, because it's quite important I get that on straight because I've already got this uh, vehicle that this comes off which is the helicopter from the Turbo Car Chase set, 8634 from 2008. Uh, and it was the only thing that's missing was this sticker. 
So I've got a very polished piece of glass there. This one's very scratched actually. So I can take this sticker and put it onto my original piece of glass and hopefully that'll make it absolutely perfect. Because with a sticker that big, it's quite uh, important that it has it in my opinion. Uh, so hopefully that isn't sun damaged and won't um, sort of split or anything when I move it. So very happy to see that. That'll uh, finish off a set and maybe I can use that in my city. Uh, there's the character Spyclops, who is kind of a six-legged, <laughs> horrible little creature, really, um, who hangs off that uh, uh, helicopter. And it's really good, actually. You spin the blades and Spyclops sort of bobs down and goes back up like he's trying to snatch something. So, um, yeah, it's a really good set, actually. A lot of those sets, until you actually see them in action, they look a bit rubbish. But then when you get them and see the sort of functions that have been built into them, I just think the Agents and Ultra Agent sets are really, really high quality. I think uh, LEGO should stick to their own um, kind of source material more than they do, to be honest. Um, right, here are some um, Technic uh, support arm pieces. And these are, in addition to the ones that I got in my last brick haul, to augment my red uh, tram bridge uh, to give it a bit more heft. So four of those, I think that's all the bits I need now to make it bigger. So I'll probably revisit that soon. I don't know if I'll do a whole video on it because it's not very significant, but um, yeah, I will definitely do it and let you know how it went. Some big ugly rock pieces. I've got one of the corner ones. So I'm buying these en masse whenever I see them. Here is one of the pointy ones. Now this is in old grey. You can see the difference there. It's a much more ill looking colour if you ask me. And that's got a nice little underwater sticker on already of a, what's that, a conger eel? Uh, I'm thinking I've got that wrong. But anyway, some sort of eel there behind some plant. So I might be able to repair that sticker or just, it looks like it's got something, yeah, something 3D wedged on the underside. So I can probably repair that to a degree maybe cut off the uh, see-through bit of sticker that's damaged, uh, try and salvage that, because that will augment my scene even more. So that's good to have. And here's the really big ugly rock piece, again in that old dark gray, which is very nice for a contrasting color. No stickers on that one. There we go. Uh, and then this piece, I got one of these the other day in another haul, well, it must've been a two or three hauls ago, but that one was in black. Uh, and this one is in dark bluish grey, it's hard to tell now, yep. Uh, and I'm going to use that in between the two sets of wheels on the underside of a train uh, wagon, cargo wagon of some sort. Probably not the one I'm using these tanks on, uh, something a bit more big. Uh, I've got a few in the works at the moment, so I'm sure that'll go to use. I think it was very cheap. But generally speaking, if you're going to be doing an order in the UK at least, buying one big bulky piece that's going to need a great big box to carry it rather than just a slim package, uh, then I start looking at more of the other bulky ones because the first one will increase the postage charge quite a bit, but then the other ones you may as well add them after you've got the uh, bigger package. Right, here's another bag of lovely bits. Got lots of slopes in there, just black slopes that are pretty boring. Um, a number plate, which I just bought for the tile underneath. Don't need that. It's just off um, a tiny turbo set, but it's 2P white tile. So I'll have that for the tile underneath. Got a nice hair piece with this gold colored laurel wreath around the sides. And that's from the Roman Emperor series nine minifigure. Uh, so I should be able to use that, I think, in a statue. Because you think of a statue in white marble would have probably a gilded um, laurel wreath on the hair or something like that. Got a couple of these silver spiders. I've got a few of these already, but I can't seem to stop buying them. Um, so they came in an Ultra Agent set, which is the one with Spyclops. That's a different Spyclops, by the way, from the one we were talking about here. It's a, a separate guy entirely. Uh, so that's 70166, Spyclops Infiltration. Uh, and he uses these as bugs, literal bugs, that are creepy crawlies that uh, can listen and do his bidding. And you can see they can uh, crawl off with stuff like this ML file tile. I've got that tile as well, so I could even recreate that mini scene of having one of these running off with it because they've got these little jaws on the front to grab something. So I kind of like these as remote controlled bugs. And when I eventually do my goodie base, I'll probably have some of these on the wall up to no good, <laughs> as long as I remember. 
So that's good, put them at the front. Got some of these lovely um, sort of plant pieces that I'm going to use as sponges in the medium blue, medium trans blue, of course. Um, and they glow in the dark, which is really good. Well, not glow in the dark, uh, sorry, fluoresce under UV light. So that's uh, really good to have. So I always buy this particular one when I see it. Uh, then I've got a couple of heads. I'll save these heads because I've, I can see I've got more and I may as well do them all as one great big uh, tower. So I'll put those to one side. Here's some more heads, for example. Oh, yes. So I need loads of prizes for uh, the stalls in my fairground for people to play games and try and win. And I've got some teddy bears and stuff like that. But I finally gave in and decided to buy some uh, uh, Malibu Stacy dolls, which are from a Simpsons set, which generally I don't buy because I think this sort of um, kind of way they decorate things is a bit different in style uh, to the city sets. But this is from the uh, Smithers minifigure. Uh, so. I thought that these would be obviously really good as prizes uh, behind a stall where you can't see them that well. So I got four of those pushing the boat out. I think they're about 50p each or something. So anyway, they're nice and bright and you can kind of think of them as dolls. Otherwise, we're not going to have much variety of prizes. Uh, one head I will get straight onto is this one. And it's important that this one isn't damaged at all because I've already got this. It's just to replace a bitten version. Uh, so this is the head of Magma Commander uh, from 8971, Aerial Defense Unit, which is another agent set. And he's up there on the battlements there commanding his robot troopers. So this one isn't damaged, uh, so that's excellent news. Um, and I've got a few bits and bobs that probably aren't worth going through. A few of those see-through chef hats. Um... I always forget. Oh, it's a tock, isn't it? I just remembered the name of it, uh, which I'd use as the top of a small jellyfish. Just got two more of those. Lots more heads. Heads, 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 heads. And I still won't go through the heads because I can see some more in the next bag. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. There we go. Add them to that. That's that bag. Here's a complete minifigure. Um, now this one is a minifigure from the recent uh, donut shop opening set, which is 60233. And he's the truck driver in that one of the great big crane, big orange crane. Uh, so I've already got that and he's driving the crane in my city. But for £1.88, I'll definitely have another one because I can use those pieces. I can even use the white hat in my uh, current factory build, which is sitting over there. <laughs> and the uh, the uh, version that's uh, got the mechanical setups is sat over there. So my desk is very cramped at the moment, but that's good to have him. Good, good. Uh, and then last bag before we go through the heads. So I've got loads of these forked uh, modified plates and therefore uh, street lamps. I've got this lovely helmet from the super secret police. I've started collecting all super secret police bits like this and the body armor and stuff like that. Uh, this is from, I think about four sets, including 70808, Super Cycle Chase from the Lego movie, of course, in 2014. Yeah, so I really like that. I'm gonna use them as my sort of elite police, if you see what I mean. And they've got that lovely sort of minifigure head on the uh, star police badge in a badge shape. So a really nice logo that. There's all sorts of pieces with this, you know, tiles and stickers and body armor and torsos and all sorts of this. So I'm going to get as uh, many as I can and have, you know, them, I don't know, storming an, uh, a baddie base or something like that. Now, this is a really interesting piece. Uh, I only got one in the end, it would seem. I thought I got more than one, but it was just an experiment, really, because it was just a very interesting shaped piece. Uh, and it is uh, from Bionicle in loads of different Bionicle sets, including 8737, Toa Hordika no Kama from 2005. Probably mangled that pronunciation. But I just thought it was really interesting. You've got an axle hole there on the top with kind of pistons coming out of it. You've got this really interesting sides with uh, these sort of round bits, which could be bolts or wheels. Uh, and I just thought it was really interesting. I mean, they're usually on the thighs of the Bionicle creatures, um, but I thought that could be part of my factory, maybe. Don't know. Bit of gubbins. 
um, bit of detail somewhere, or maybe, I mean, it could even sort of drive around on what looked like wheels to me and almost be like one of those mouse droids on um, Star Wars. I don't know. It might need some more pieces sort of sticking out the front or something like that, or it could just go sort of over a pipe or even onto a pipe on a wall. Ah, actually, that'd be really good, wouldn't it? So imagine there's a vertical pipe, kind of like this stack of minifigures, and if this went over it, it would sort of look like a, I don't know, sort of junction box or something like that on it. Yeah, I think I might put that in my factory, actually. That's really cool. Uh, so there's some more heads. Let's get them on as well. And then a couple of other random bits, like these lime um, grills are for my Venus flydrop ride, which I'm trying to make more green. And uh, yeah, a few other bits like these connectors and these connectors because I'm making another ride for my fairground. Uh, so yeah, lots of projects under development helped out by that. Oh, I've just spotted another bag that nearly escaped. The heads will have to wait yet more because there's another one, look, another head. Goodness knows why they're all in different bags. So this has got lots of modified bricks in black with the sort of bar on the side. They're really useful for trains, for kind of like handles near ladders and things like that. I got two more of these snap sort of connectors to augment my bridge. I need four more, um, but he only had two, so two at a time, I suppose. So that can go with those. Uh, and there's this quite interesting tile. It just says happy on it with a rainbow. A badly colored rainbow, if you ask me, but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> and a tree uh, and that's from a trolls world tour set from this year 2020 uh, so it's 41251 poppy's pod uh, and i think it's in the book there uh, so anyway i thought that'd be quite good for a child's drawing perhaps that they were making or maybe it's a postcard for sale in a shop or something like that anyway it's something i don't have so why not right so then on to the heads in no particular order I've got quite a good selection. We've got this one, which I believe is two-sided. Yep. And it's kind of a mad scientist, actually, uh, from the Scary Laboratory set, 1382, which is a studio set. Uh, and I think it's kind of doing a, a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing, with that being the mad Dr. Jekyll, and then the sort of monster that he becomes in Mr. Hyde. And <laughs> I just love that face. I think I could buy this head again and again because you could use that all over. But you could also use that all over. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, imagine going to a dentist who looked like that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't stay long, would you? <laughs> um, then there's this one with the ginger moustache and goatee. And that was in quite a few castle sets, including 6009 Black Knight. And I never realised the famous Black Knight was a, a ginger guy. Anyway, so that's him. Then we've got a couple of Alpha Team ones. So this one is actually unique to the set 6774. Alpha Team ATV, and it's a character called Flex. And that undersea sort of vehicle really is an all-terrain vehicle or ATV because, I mean, it's driving on the seabed. Uh, so if it drives on land straight down to the seabed, that is definitely very all-terrain. Uh, then we've got here a, a very common um, one from older sort of junior sets, like 6474, wheeled front shovel. So he's often a workman in those, but I quite like it. He looks quite fun. Uh, this one is a Lucy. I think it should be double-sided. Yeah, it's Flashback Lucy from the Lego Movie 2 series. Uh, yeah, so just a nice smile and a nice, I don't know, you could call that a scream. I mean, she's sort of supposed to be singing, but it could be all sorts of things. Could be somebody on a roller coaster, couldn't it? So that looks good. Ah, there's the other Alpha Team 1. Uh, this is also the character of Flex, but uh, with a slightly uh, smaller mouthy grin. He's really grinning there, isn't he? <laughs> and a microphone. Uh, so that's from 4791, Alpha Team Subsurface Scooter. Uh, and I like that. He could be all sorts of things with a microphone on, maybe a DJ or something. He looks a bit sort of zany. Uh, actually, that one's got a microphone as well. So, yeah, or <laughs> maybe I'll put them under the sea again. Who knows? Uh, then I've got two of this one, and they're next to each other showing different sides, uh, and that's just, uh, well, all sorts of different sets, actually, but uh, 8970 Robo Attack is one, which is the one with the Doctor Inferno mech in it that's being built in the uh, big warehouse in my uh, harbour area as well. So he's just one of the innocent bystanders there. But another really good sort of uncertain face for a roller coaster rider. 
Then we've got the incredibly angry face, so he could be a bus driver in my city quite easily, <laughs> of the Series 7 Evil Knight. So I like that because I really like <laughs> angry faces as well. Then we've got two of this very sort of straight face guy with a small moustache. Uh, he's pretty common as well, actually, uh, in lots of old sets, including 7134, A-Wing Fighter, where he's the mechanic. That's the one from uh, year 2000. So, yeah, I mean, not everyone has to be happy all the time, do they? So <laughs> we'll have that as well. Uh, and then last but certainly not least is the Series 2 Explorer's head. Now, I've got the Series 2 Explorer in uh, my adventure shop, which is part of Fast Food Corner. Um, and it's a bit of a waste putting him in there because you don't see that wonderful bushy moustache and monocle setup. So I definitely thought I'd need another person with that head somewhere else in my city. So there it is. Right, so a wonderful selection of heads. I think you'll agree to augment all the scenes in my city. They're so important for making those scenes as funny as they are. Lots of good stuff for under the sea with these uh, Atlantis key holders and so on. Some prizes for my fairground, some bits for some fairground ride. Things to repair a helicopter. Lots of black bits for a project that I'm not telling you about. Some rocks and some stuff for a big train cargo carriage, which I think will be excellent. And the most interesting piece I think of the day probably is this one, which can augment my factory. Brilliant. Good haul. <laughs> So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Please check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be in Brick Nottingham doing another city update. And I'm thinking about maybe doing something train related because we haven't done one of those for a while. Uh, and then on Monday, we'll be there for part four of our wonderful factory build. So, see you then!